In this episode, Corey Davis and Dr. Rob talk about blood flow, beets, beet leaves, iron, and juicing. ...in cell in Portland, Oregon. Because of the, the bricks? Kind of. Yeah, there's like white, and it's like this weird lighting. Well, it, it, it's either a prison or a classroom, and I've always sort of, you know, thought of them sort of similarly, so. Yeah, it's a prison class. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Buddy, um... You I pull got your carrot juice this morning. See that? Oh, that's so much better than my acidic uh, <laughs> bevy here. Well, I'll be hitting that later. I just I'm just trying to look good in front of the camera. So that's great. Uh, actually, I recently bought beets, and uh, they had the most beautiful uh, leaves on top. Yeah. So I plan on juicing those bad boys soon. That's Love where those. all the iron is. You know, a lot of people don't realize when they're like, "Oh, I eat beets for iron." It's the greens. That's what most of the iron is. Yeah. Vitamin K, uh, the nitrates. If you want to get a good pump before your workout, woo, oh. you know, some increased uh, blood flow there, my compadre. Ooh, I, I like blood flow. Do you, um, do you pull espresso? I don't. I had a grinder that will allow me to espresso, but I don't have a machine. I just have the, the Chemex, which actually I got because of you, believe it or You're not. Kidding. No. You, you taught me about coffee. Before you, I was just like, so what, gas station or? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. So thank you. Yeah, and I'm loving it. Man, I'm glad I could uh, assist in the old watched, coffee culture. I watched your videos and, of course, us talking as we've gone on. I got a hand grinder to make sure they got a nice even grind. Oh, man, come on. Now you're just, now my ego is just, come on. You're just, all you, you're just buddy. massaging it. Massaging all it. you. <laughs> it's, well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you, man, when you pull espresso from an espresso machine, mm -hmm. if, if you want to do it right, if you want to craft a really good cup, it's frustrating. The, the Chemex is really, really fun. You know, you get a gooseneck kettle and you kind of just, you do the twirly whirly mm -hmm. <laughs> and you make uh, that perfect cup of joe. If you want to get technical, you can get the thermometer and then the timer. Oh, but wow. the espresso machine, holy Toledo, Batman, it is frustrating because you have to, you have to, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, no, not grinding in. They call it, um, oh, it's going to come to me now. When you, you basically have to set the grinder. Mm. And because if the particles are too coarse, the mm. espresso will just gush out. And mm. if it's too fine, it'll just like barely come out. So that's kind of the extreme version of the two. So in order to get mm. even like a near perfect, it's not forgiving really at all. So you need that mm. perfect setting. And man, oh man, do you waste a lot of coffee doing that because you have to constantly pull, waste the coffee in your cup, waste a lot of water, and then waste more because there's some um, of the coffee still in the grinder chute. You have to like pull more out of it. And it just mm. it fascinates me how one teeny little variable, you know, most people, they'll just say, ah, a cup of coffee is a cup of coffee. Maybe. I mean, if you enjoy the, uh, the taste, it's great. Mm. But one small variable and it completely changes Total the disaster. cup of coffee. So the amount of coffee, I, I probably wasted like $4 worth of coffee, just like ground, which is a lot. It's like, it's actually a, quite a bit of just ground coffee, just getting this. Mm. Otherwise it just gushed out. Wow. And I wonder if other people are going through this too. Um, well, they'd have to, if, if you want to pull a decent shot. So, so you're doing it according to like a, uh, like an epitome spec, more or less, like you're trying to get a perfect pull where uh, let's say otherwise you could just, just deal with what you had or. Yeah. I mean, and people do. So if you go to McDonald's or a Starbucks and you look mm. at the coffee, if you order an Americano, you'll see the most of the time it's just a thin white layer on top. It's just right. under extracting, which means that the grind is too coarse. So when they, when they push mm. the button, it just gushes out like water. Ah. It's supposed to flow out like honey, like more viscous. Ah. And then you get that nice crema. Crema isn't everything, but it's just, even just in terms of the taste, sour versus bitter. If, if it's too fine and it barely comes out, it'll be super, super bitter. Mm. And if it's too coarse, it'll be sour. Wow. So um, it's Only crazy. Art. So when you pull your espresso, you, you know, once you dial it in, it's called dialing in. Uh, that'd be a cool name for a cafe, maybe dialed in or something. I like you that. Know? For people uh, who are really geeky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is like nobody. You have like zero you customers. There, Rob's like, finally! Is that a yeah. phone, phone company that we're, yeah, exactly. we're getting here? Like, are they competing against telephones? Telephones? Yeah. <laughs> You're the only one that's like, finally, the right coffee place. Yeah, they're like, oh, another AT&T. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, buddy. But um, 
It's crazy, man. I, I tell you, like even just switching from coffee to coffee, now that I finally dialed this sucker in, I'm going to be getting the same bean next time because I don't want to waste anymore. Damn. Well, but I digress. I hope, I hope you can nail it, buddy, because – I don't want I don't want Rob to have a not good cup of Joe. Who knows nailed what's gonna it. happen in nailed the it, chat like it. this if Rob's sipping on something sour. We don't oh man, I'll just have like coffee. the most I'll have a sour face. That's it. Exactly. A, You're like, I don't know, fermentation. I don't get it. Yeah. Speaking of which, it's you know, some of the finest coffee in the world is fermented. Fermented. Mm-hmm. Um, what does that mean, Rob, with coffee? Like let's use that. So people I actually don't know. Access- I really don't know. I don't know. I know. How about I know a little bit about coffee. All right. It's here, simple here. with coffee. Okay, so traditionally, of course, fermentation I guess fermentation is kind of a loose, it can be loosely interpreted. Right? Um, I think I would like to start off by arguing that fermentation is alchemy. It's just a transformation I love of that. Yes, it is. Right? It's a transformation of one thing to another. And that's kind of the loosest interpretation of fermentation uh, that can apply to something like coffee which is simply just let to set out in an environment where the fruit begins to ripen and then change a bit, right? So it's sitting out and it's fermenting. In other words, like the sugars are being converted into alcohols or other things before they actually uh, disrupt the fruit, the pericarp from the coffee bean, and then allow the coffee bean to, to dry and go through possible additional fermentation of conversion of those carbohydrates into other compounds but right. it's not done under a controlled environment it's kind of done oftentimes in open air or using natural yeast that may be found either on the food itself or or in the environment uh, similar with cocoa cocoa is another one people can access very easily uh, in their understanding of um food <laughs> that we access on a regular basis yeah. that they may not know is is a cultured food now yeah. These foods don't contain the benefits. So let's not let's not put them into a category of something like sauerkraut, which contains mm-hmm. the benefits of fermentation. Where coffee beans and and cacao really just benefit from pl- flavor profiles being changed due to the fermentation, not transforming nutrients into something that we benefit from. So I think that's important for us to distinguish off the bat that as yeah. Rob and I are talking about fermentation, things like beer or coffee or cacao. Are fermented foods but aren't necessarily healthy foods by virtue of fermentation right right like in other words you're not going to be getting a probiotic from coffee no um however there is a huge difference between drinking coffee black mm-hmm. um compared to adding creams sugars and so forth and its effect on the gi um and benefits of fermentation is it's kind of loosely defined the benefits where they're coming from. Are they coming from bacteria? Are they coming from the alchemy? The benefits could just be merely coming from the transformation of that food. So we know coffee Mm -hmm. has very interesting antioxidant profiles. Is that because of the coffee bean itself just naturally contained or when you ferment it, does that change? I mean, it must, it must change in Mm -hmm. some way. You must get certain immune compounds that structurally change over time Mm -hmm. that might make it more beneficial or is the brewed beverage less beneficial than just eating the fruit off the tree the coffee berry Mm. i don't know maybe they both have their own unique distinctions but so i people i think people think of fermented foods like what you just mentioned probiotics like sauerkraut kimchi and so forth which you take in and sort of to replenish gut flora right to create that microbial or add to the microbial world in your gut um Mm. but fermentation can also have benefits in many many other ways too Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Benefits in, uh, of course, our own immunological and digestive world. Uh, benefits to having a good time when you're out and you want to turn <laughs> grains into good times. Uh, grains typically. into good times. <laughs> From grain to good. That's right. That's fermentation, baby. In a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, so the, I guess the, the simplest way to look at fermentation, of course, as we said, is an alchemical change. Oftentimes, it's the conversion of simple sugars into different compounds, and different bacteria have kind of different effects. Okay, let's back up a little bit. Yeah, fermentation often often also deals with yeast and or bacteria to make this alchemical change happen upon a food substance, Um, and we'll get to how it also affects things like vitamins and other things that you would find in nutritional supplements. But I think we could start off with food as being a nice 
way for people to get access to this concept. And probably most people listening or watching have an idea of what fermentation is or else we wouldn't have found your way here. Yeah. So we want to try to add some additional value to your understanding of why fermentation is important, I think on a daily basis. I mean, I don't know about you, Rob, but I try, I strive to eat some kind of fermented food every day. Um, how about you? Uh, I probably eat it, one fermented food most days, I would say. Not every day, mm -hmm. but um, more so in the winter, I would say for me. For sure, mm. because I crave those spicy kind of comfy sort of foods. So sauerkraut, mm. kimchi in particular. Yeah, um, those are my primary go-to's as well. Yogurts, but nowadays, like mass market yogurt, I don't even really consider it as a probiotic. It's all pasteurized, and I don't mm. really know. It's hard to mm. say.